Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sam and this is the Crafty Blinder van build. So a quick recap where we're up to. We've removed all the the history from the van here, the, um, the wood panelling and the floor and we've repaired everything underneath. We've put the windows in, put the vents in, um, put services in. I haven't shown you that yet. No, I haven't. I've put holes in anyway for, for all the services. Um, maybe need to. You'll see that in other videos. But yeah, we're quite a ways on. We've done the leaky clips. We've then done the insulation on the floor. Replaced the old floor. We've then put insulation in the walls, the ceiling. We've sounded and we've vapor buried. Now the next job is to remove the headlining and do all them things above there. So again, in this video, you'll see we sound in, we soundproof, we use the vapor barrier for a, for vapor barrier, but a little bit of insulation as well. And we put insulation into the sides and we complete the whole vapor barrier then. We envelope the whole inside of the van. Um, we block up little crevices with insulation as well um, anywhere where we get some thermal bridging or there's a possibility for moisture to build up and sit we've uh, we've tried to deal with them areas by insulating and vapor barrier but anyway enough for me talking let's get on into the video and you can see how we did it I nearly forgot we take the headliner out and we put back an overhead locker and that's in this video as well. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Today's job, remove the headlining. So we'll start by removing the sun visor. So this is pretty straightforward, probably one of the easier tasks that we've done so far. And then we remove the shelf. Um, I don't understand the purpose of this shelf because everything you put on it ends up falling out and banging on your head, but it might come in useful at some point. You also need to remove the center console light unit. Um, this is pretty straightforward, it is just held in by clips around the side and then there's two cables to disconnect. We remove the passenger side tray and sun visor and then we need to start looking at the door seals. These door seals hold a couple of panels in and they actually hold part of the roof line in it. So you need to pull them, just pull them down a, a foot or so and then look at the trims on the, on the front pillar. These also hold up the roof lining and once you've popped them out you'll see the roof lining will drop just a little bit and this this is it basically out now there's a couple of clips on the back here there's actually four and when I started I thought they'd be popped in but once I popped the first one off I realized that you didn't need any tools you could just basically push this roof trim out but if you're going to do this and you've got a rear view mirror or in my case a reverse camera you should maybe think at removing that first think about removing that first definitely think about it and don't do what i do so oh, there you go there it goes <laughs> so one good whack and this comes out no bother at all it's free everywhere else it's just hanging on the clips at the minute so i've tried to wiggle it out that's not working so a good whack. That's probably not the way the manufacturers would tell you to take it out, but if it come real lad like me, just pull on and knock it out. So the black areas you can see here are the manufacturer's sound editing, but there is quite large areas that have nothing on them. So I decided that I would apply some sound editing. On top of that, we're adding soundproofing. I'm not using this for its soundproofing properties. I'm using this for insulation. We're tight for space behind the headliner, so I didn't want to put any bulky materials in there that would push or distort the headliner. 
so we're using the soundproofing I'll then put some AirTech double over the top of it this will extend the vapor barrier into this area but it'll also give us a little bit of a, a thermal barrier as well remember you need to apply plenty of this trim adhesive we expect to be traveling in some hot countries and we don't want the material separating away from each other we want the AirTech double to stick firmly to this soundproofing we have no issues with the soundproofing coming away because it's designed for this purpose it's designed to be applied direct to the body of the vehicle and it won't sag it won't drop away so we don't want the same thing happening with the vapor barrier I recommend cutting your material to size before you go to stick it up this way you'll you'll see yourself can you manage to stick it up in one piece if you can't cut it into two pieces do what you can do what you find manageable I find it much easier to do one piece at a time one big piece and then it's just a matter of trimming it to fit any any mistakes you make you can always cover them up with foil tape it's not that important what is important is making sure that you've got a good seal on your vapor barrier anything else you can hide with the foil tape this gap here is about 20 mil so I got some Celotex and I stood on it and squashed it down until it was about 20 mil thick just to fit in this gap because it was such a wide gap I believe that that would be a problem in the future either with moisture gathering behind it or thermal bridging cold air coming through it so I took the decision to seal it up and it's been a good one now we're on to the best part of the job putting the foil tape on <laughs> as you know from previous videos this is my favorite part I just love putting this stuff on um, it's just so reassuring it's I don't know what it is it just feels good and it gives a fantastic result when it's finished as you can see here in the corners above the doors we used earth wool insulation and then covered it with vapor barrier as you can see there it's made a lovely job a real tidy job we still have a few more cables to go through the cable run so we're not sealing that up to the very end unfortunately the next part of this build the footage is missing we didn't capture any of it however i did manage to take a few pictures along the way and this is what we're showing you now So the shelf that I put in the roof lining, I've braced it with 12mm ply here, 6mm ply here, and again mirrored both sides. This is going nowhere. Roof clips, don't forget to take them out the roof and put them back in this panel for when you reinstall it. That's the inside. I haven't done anything with that yet. Possibly I'll line it when it's when it's in situ, just to just to take the drum out of it. But I think it's time to put this bad boy back. Should maybe trim them off as well. So we trimmed all these holes up, all ready to be accepted. Now I've, I've overlaid this, I've wrapped it right round, I don't know if it's going to fit, so we'll offer it up, if it has to come back out, it has to come back out, but I'm pretty sure there's enough room on it for it to allow us to, to fit it, it's the worst it's going to happen, it's going to rub, but we'll see, we'll see. Now. This part of the install is definitely a two-man job, definitely. But we're in the middle of lockdown and there's nobody around. My brother's at work, um, my wife would probably start shouting at me after about five minutes. So I was on my own and I'll tell you what, it was difficult. <laughs> there's, no, there's no easy way of doing this. It's heavy, it's awkward, 
and you've just got to use what you can to get it in. Um, it was it was awful. There's no, <laughs> there's, there's no two ways about it. It was just awful. So, using my head, literally using my head, I held it in place while I managed to put a couple of screws in where the handles go. And, you know, it was just... It was just horrendous trying to trying to do this on my own. Once I had a couple of screws in, I decided it was probably better to put the clips in in the roof. As this had held it in previously, it would offer me a little bit of support now when I needed it. One thing I would definitely recommend is don't tighten everything right up. As you'll see, there's a lot of adjustment needs done. A lot of lining up, a lot of offering up. You know, I don't know how many times I offer up this piece and it just doesn't fit. I can't get any screws in, I can't get anything to line up. Um, at first I thought I'd maybe altered the shape of the roof lining when I installed the timber, but I hadn't. I just hadn't really put it in the right position to begin with. And I put this all down to just working on my own. If there'd been two of us there, it would have been much easier. Being 100% honest with you, it took well over an hour to get this first piece to line up, for the screws to bite and pull in enough to get it into the right position. And I'll be honest with you, I was, I was getting very frustrated. But once I got one side in, the rest followed quite easily. And it was surprising how easy it went together in the end. Again, just perseverance, just crack on and keep at it. I maybe should have used clamps right from the beginning. Um, I didn't really give it a thought, but by just putting something in to assist you a little bit, it made life so much easier. And this side went together quite quickly. I was very impressed with how quickly it went together. After spending over an hour on one side, I didn't want to spend another hour on this side, so I was really happy when it all went in. I only have one other comment to make, really, and that was about the gap. <laughs> the gap between the, the ceiling now, which is uh, the base of my locker, and the, the shelf. It's about 75mm. Fantastic for keeping things in place and for things not falling out and landing on your head now horrible and I mean horrible to try and get your hand in with a ratchet and put two screws in the gap just really wasn't big enough but we persevered again and we eventually got them in quarter of a turn at a time <laughs> quarter of a turn oh my god I must have been there 20 minutes trying to bolt this up but anyway we got it in and it looked good and it was secure and that's all that matters It was then just a matter of reinstalling the centre light, doing the electrical connections and just pushing it back into place. Probably the easiest part of this whole job. Then a quick test just to make sure everything lights up and we're back in business. Now that we have one side lined up, we can go around and tighten up all the screws that we put in at the beginning on this side. Taking care to make sure that everything lines up.
So we've made this template um, out of the old door lining and braced it up. And now it's my transferring it onto the furniture board. In the background, you can see the bulkhead. We only kept hold of this for this one template. Once we had a rough outline, we uh, we disposed of it. Um, we offered up this template a couple of times, and during the process, I actually managed to snap it. This is what you can see here. But it wasn't pretty good, so we just bashed on. It was at this point I had to decide how long these side pieces were going to be on the panel and I decided to keep them quite short to be honest. I offered it up in the van a couple of times and once I was happy it was time to cut it out. This furniture board is from Moorland and it's really good stuff but it comes at a price. It really does come at a price. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very expensive stuff. So you don't want to make any mistakes and you don't want to waste material. So take great care when you're cutting it. Make sure that all your measurements are right before you cut it. And just have confidence in yourself and your abilities. Um, you know, once you start your cut, just keep going. Once I'd finished cutting out, it was just a matter of adding some edge trim and routering out the hole for the opening. But we're not spending any time in this video going into the detail of that, but this is how it looked when it was finished. We now have a nice deep over cab locker for storing large bulky items. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, a little bit painful this one because there was so much work went into it and losing a little bit of footage kind of like took the shine off it a little bit. Um, if it's one of them, anybody that's vlogged or made videos like this will understand my pain because sometimes it's just not there when you go looking for it. Um, the issue was the card was corrupt. So even though we'd made the best efforts to record everything, we missed some little bits off there. But there were key parts, um, just a little bit gutted that I couldn't show you every step of the dance. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please consider subscribing. Um, if you if you want to know anything, give us a shout. You know, if you want to talk about anything, or if there's anything that you'd like to know about, or something we've not covered yet, just give us a shout and we'll uh, we'll help you out where we can. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.